Where did you get those? Onome asked excitedly. Her eyes filled with envy as she admired Ama's new waist bits. Moving around to get the better look of the stolen bits. Mama bought them for me, was her friend's reply, as she spun around for Onome to admire. Onome's eyes could not stop gazing at Ama's waist, as the sun, which was setting, shone on the bits, making them glimmer. Onome and Ama had been friends since birth, some would say, since they were in the womb. Their mothers were best friends, and their fathers were so close. If not old, you would think they were siblings. The girls, who were on their way to the stream, arrived just in time to see Essie and Ose leaving the stream. Onome noticed they also had beautiful waist beads on their waist. As they swayed, so did the beads. Did you all have a meeting? To get waist beads without me, she whispered to her friend Amma. Amma laughed. Why would I attend a meeting with those silly girls without you? True, Onome thought with a smile. They had a rivalry with Essie and Ose. The pair had once played a trick on Onome at the river, which almost got her drowned. If not for the timely intervention of Amma, she would have died. That night, after Onome had dinner with her mother, as her father was out of the village for an urgent family affair, Onome sat at her mother's feet to listen to tales under the moonlit sky. She asked, Mama, can you get me waist beads too? When did you start liking waist beads? Her mother asked her miss. As she looked at her daughter with surprise in her eyes, Onome never liked accessories, so this request was very unexpected. Everyone has a waist bead, she replied. Who is this everyone? Her mother asked. Ama does, and even those silly girls, Essie and Ose too. Mama, if you see the weights so weighs with their waist, I'm sure it will look good on mine too. She spoke excitedly as she stood up to sew her waist for her mother to see. So, you want the waist beads because it looks good on everyone else, and you don't want to be left out? Her mother asked. Yes, Mama, on the morning nodded. Do you think that is enough reason to want something? Her mother asked. Onome, who did not have an answer, continued to stare at her mother, hopefully. Sit down, my beautiful Onome. Let me tell you a story. Her mother said as Onome sat back at her mother's feet, anticipating a beautiful story and maybe a promise of some beats too. Once upon a time, in a village far, far away, her mother began. There was a very beautiful dark-skinned girl called Alia, who was around your age. Alia was the only child born to a poor farmer, Tade and his wife, Runke. Despite their difficulty in providing the basic amenities, the pair always tried to meet their daughter's need and want. They often made remarks about how her beauty would be the family salvation. Alia, who knew this, would often demand things beyond her parents' capacity and cried till they got them for her, as they could not bear to see her cry. One day, as Alia was on her way to hang out with her best friend Nike, she realized some girls were looking at her as they laughed. Enraged, she walked up to them. Why are you laughing at me? She challenged. Who is laughing at you? The girl sneered. A poor girl like you once said. The other replied, look at her bare waist. She cannot even afford waist beads. They said as they clapped each other's hands and began to laugh. Aliyah's anger turned to embarrassment. She was so upset she changed her mind about seeing her friend and returned home. Immediately she was a few feet from her parents' hut. She sat on the bare brown soil and began to wail. Her parents, who had just returned from the farm, were washing their hands and feet at the back of the hut when they heard their daughter cry. They rushed over to check on her and they saw their beautiful daughter covered in sand crying. What is wrong? Her mother asked as she bent over to Aliyah's sitting level. Mama, I want waist beads, she said as she began to cry again. Waist beads? Her father asked. Why? Some girls called me poor because I don't have waist beads, Aliyah explained, crying even harder. Waist beads are too expensive. Only the affluent can afford them, her mother said. Aliyah, who was not satisfied with her mother's response, turned her gaze to their hearts and cried even harder. Her parents, unable to bear watching her cry, promised to see what they could do. Days went by and Alia would always bring up the waist beads in discussion with her parents. Mama, when I get my beautiful waist beads, I will dance like this. 
Mama, when I get my waist beads, I will walk like this. Every time she spoke about how she would wear them as they adorned her waist, her eyes would gleam up with a new sense of excitement. For days, she refused to leave the house, saying she would not leave until her parents got her waist beads. One day, as her father and mother were returning late from the farm, Tade's feet hit something. As the pair checked, they saw something glittering in the soil. It had just rained and everywhere was muddy. Curious, Tade bent down to pick up the stones. As he picked them up, he and his wife rinsed them to their amazement. It was a beautiful set of waist beads. So beautiful it was fit for the waist of a princess. That night, Alia was gifted the beautiful waist beads. Her parents did not tell her where they had picked them from. She assumed her crying and manipulative tactics at work. Only previous to how expensive waist beads were, she hugged them so hard that night and for this, she was the perfect daughter doing anything for them before being asked. As time went on, Alia realized she was getting attention from everyone she came across. People were giving her gifts and obsessing over her. Boys began to come to her father's house to give yam, potato, and every food product possible. Girls that used to insult her were asking to be her friends. As Alia sat thinking about the new happenings, she thought, they can all see how expensive my waist beads are and now know my parent and Oppo. That is why they want to be my favor, she thought, smiling and dancing in her room, making sure the beads swayed as she prepared for bed. Her parents, who were beneficiaries of the newfound favor, were very happy, as their dreams of Aliyah bringing favor to them were manifesting, oblivious to the consequences to come. Every night, since the waist beads were gifted to Aliyah, she would have nightmares but would never remember the contents in the morning. Since she could not remember, she never gave a second thought to her dreams. One day, as Aliyah parent had to leave for the neighboring village to attend a wedding, they asked Aliyah to come with them but she refused. And so, her parent had no choice but to entrust the house to her care. They also made sure to inform their neighbor to look out for her as they would not be back until two days later. That night, Alia stayed out in the company of her numerous friends, as she enjoyed being the center of attention. As it got darker, her friends began to leave and Alia returned home to sleep. As she laid in bed that night, she began to hear wailing outside her heart. Irritated by this, she shouted, go and cry somewhere else, people are sleeping. The crying stopped, better, she thought, as she continued her sleep. But shortly after, the crying started again. But this time, it wasn't just one voice. It felt like a group of children were outside our huts. Enraged, she stood up to pick a mortar pistol, laying on the floor from a pounded yam lunch, and went outside to scare the troublemakers. But as she went outside, she saw no one inside. After looking around, she went back inside. But as she closed the door, turning to go back to bed, at the foot of her bed, she was met with the glowing eyes of a child. How did you get here was all she could utter as fear gripped her. Just then, the child reached for her hands. She shut her eyes and screamed, waking up on her bed covered in sweat. It was just a nightmare, she thought, as she heard a rooster signifying a new dawn. What sort of dream was that, she wondered, as she went to get herself ready for the day, forgetting about the contents of her dream. As she sat to have breakfast, she heard her best friend Nike's voice. Nike entered and refused to go closer to Alia. You have new friends and don't look for me anymore, her friend asked, looking upset. I could never replace you, was Alia's reply. As she stood up to hug Nike, I'm sorry. The two soon reconciled and sat to have breakfast. Nike, who had not seen Alia since she got her waist beads, admired her friend's waist. Your parents really love you. They got you the prettiest beads I have ever seen. I will ask Mama to get me waist beads just like yours, she smiled. It was agreed that Nike would sleep over that night to catch up with Alia. But Nike needed to go home to inform her parents first and get some games the two girls would play together that night. As Alia was left alone, she decided to go sweep the back of her heart. When she got to her room window, she saw tiny footprints that seemed to belong to multiple children. This children self, she said as she continued to sweep dismissing it. As evening drew, 
it's begun to rain heavily and Nikki had not returned to sleep over. Alia decided to nap as she waited for her friend, but she soon began to feel wetness on her face. Making her jump to her feet, she saw a part of the hot roof was leaking with water. She moved her bed to a drier side and as she stood on a stool to find something to patch the roof, she focused her attention on the hole. Just then, she saw an eye peeping at her from the roof. Shocked, she jumped down. But just like it never happened, her room was dry with no leak in the roof. At this point, Aliyah was aware something was amiss. Just as she was about to leave her hut to go over to Nikkei's despite the rain, she saw Nikkei running over to her hut. Excited, Aliyah hugged her friend and told her about a strange encounter. You are probably overreacting, Nikkei said, with her gaze intent on Aliyah. As she stretched the beautiful comb over to Aliyah, yeah, comb your hair. Aliyah looked at Nikkei and thought for a minute. Nikkei was a bigger scaredy cat than she was and would never dismiss Aliyah's problem. That was one of the reasons she loved Nikkei. As she looked at Nikkei sitting before her, she locked eyes with Nikkei's intense gaze. She became sure the Nikkei before her wasn't her friend. How was her body dry despite the heavy rain outside? It was as if a cloth was removed from Aliyah's eyes, and she could see the strange characteristics of Nikkei. Why was there so in her fingernails? Where was the game she was supposed to bring? All this and more played in Aliyah's thoughts as her heart began to beat very hard in her chest. You are not Nikki, she said, as she stood up, her back to the wall of the earth. Of course I am, Nikki said. You are not Nikki, Aliyah repeated. The Nikki before her became enraged, as she grew larger as she spoke. I gave you the attention you crave. Girls and boys flock around you, and a waist beats to adorn your waist. Yet, you have refused to join in our play every night. What play, and what do you mean you gave me waste bits? Right before her, the giant Nikkei in front of her transformed into dozens of children. As they circled Aliyah, their voices became worn as they repeated over and over. I gave you the attention you crave. Girls and boys flock around you, and a waste bit to adorn your waist. Yet, you have refused to join us in our play every night. Leave me alone, I don't want the waste bits again. Please take it, was all Aliyah could say as she began to move. They followed her. Everything that brought Aliyah to this situation flashed before her eyes. Why did she want waste bits, she thought. If she got a chance to leave again, she would be a good daughter to her parents. She tried to pull the waste bits off, but they seemed to cling to her waist tighter as she tried. She began to feel them cut through her skin. Was she going to die like this, without seeing her best friend Nikki and parents one more time? As she closed her eyes, resigning to fate, everything stopped. She could no longer hear the voices. Carefully opening her eyes to see what was happening, right in her room was her best friend Nikki, holding a destroyed waistband. Nikki had entered the room to see her friend as the rain had refused to stop. But as she came in, she saw Aliyah crying and repeating that she didn't want the waste bits. Not knowing what to do, she called on Aliyah several times, but Aliyah didn't seem to hear. She put the waste bits to the court, and that was how everything stopped. Aliyah could not stop crying as she told her friend everything. That night, the two could not sleep and waited for dawn. As soon as they heard the rooster signifying dawn, they went to the stream and chewed the bits into it. As her parents returned that day, Aliyah ran to them, hugging them and promising never to ask for anything to discomfort her parents again. And so, that is the end of the story, Onome, her mother said. Onome, who was still at the feet of her mother, listening attentively, said, Thank you, Mama. As she stood up to Olga, I will sway my waist just as they are and not compare myself to trends. Her mother smiled. Remember, my dear. Hebrews 13.5 says, Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. Always be content with what you have and trust in God's provision. Onome nodded. Feeling a sense of peace and understanding, I will, Mama. Thank you for the story and the lesson. Thank you, guys. And this concludes our story. 
I want to use this opportunity to thank you all for the love of my birthday, June 5th, for the likes, subscriptions, and cheers. God bless you. You all make the child in me very happy. Telling stories has always been a childhood dream, and you all have made it into a reality. Thank you very much. If you are watching and haven't subscribed, please do like, share, and tell us in the comments. Lesson you got from this story. Check out my other stories as I'm sure you will find something you like. And as always, see you in my next video. But also, don't forget to check out my vlog channel, Elsa underscore Rhymes. The link will be in the description. Bye, besties.